Our help is in the name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, for all without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Welcome, everyone. On this Easter, in Easter Sunday, we begin the month of May, and so I want to start by reminding each one of us that because of Mary, we have an intimate relationship with her son, Jesus. He gave us to Mary as he gave his beloved disciple, John, to her and her to him at the crucifixion. That relationship strengthens our Easter joy. And so as we begin our prayer, in union with Mary and with all of the saints, we again unite ourselves to Jesus and remember the new life that he promised. He died and rose from the dead so that our sins and the mercy of God could come together. Let's reunite that again in our hearts today as we pause Understand our human weakness, confess our sins, and pray for each other, especially those who are most affected by the current circumstances in which we live. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, though your people walk in the valley of darkness, no evil should they fear, for they follow in faith the call of the shepherd, whom you have sent for their hope and strength. Attune our minds to the sound of his voice. Lead our steps in the path he has shown, that we may know the strength of his outstretched arm and enjoy the light of your presence forever. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and the Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks right. be to God.
Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed, for you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Friends, may the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter the sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice, as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven all out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So again, Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
this week as we stand here, my youngest son, John, is preparing for finals. Um, I think his last final is on Thursday, and he will be a college graduate. That's our prayer. You know, I've been talking to a lot of parents who are in this same situation, whether it's a graduate from college or a graduate from high school, all of us who are the parents are feeling a little bit sad. You know, graduation and all of the pomp and circumstance and the procession was a time of great celebration and of camaraderie, a great way to mark a milestone of accomplishment. I know a lot of schools are trying to do this virtually, and we will adjust. But looking at our experience to theirs, it's just different. And from the older perspective, it's a little bit sad. You know, and I think that one experience of graduation marks a lot of what we're going through. You know, as we look back, there is sadness because we aren't going there. And then I think there's a little bit of anxiety because the future is not so clear. We've started to move out of our stay-at-home order, parts of Pennsylvania. We're happy about that. We're starting to anticipate what that's going to look like for all of us. But if you're like me, there is a lot of uncertainty. I am reminded that in the early church, there was also a lot of uncertainty. When Peter was preaching to the groups of people that gathered and was baptizing them, there was uncertainty. There was great confusion. And it took them actually centuries to figure it out. No, I'm hoping it doesn't take us centuries to figure this out. But the early church had a couple of really important qualities that we too should embrace. They had the image of the Good Shepherd, one who was leading them, one who they were following. You and I should be recommitted to Jesus as our way, our truth, our life. He is who we follow. And as we follow him, we can be confident that he will lead us to these green pastures. You know, Peter used one word at the beginning of the reading that we heard today. Beloved. It's not a word that we use a lot. But it's a powerful word that we should meditate on and let sink deep into us. It's the word that the Father spoke to the Son at the Transfiguration. This is my beloved Son. It's the word that Peter spoke to those who were listening, all of us, beloved. You know, that word beloved has a lot of connotations. You know, it brings up a tenderness, a kindness, this love that transcends um, all other kinds of love. It's that agape kind of love. But you know, one of the translations that I like about beloved, you know, is simply, I'm crazy about you. I'm crazy. You know, when the early church was listening to the good news, they were hearing that this God who was separate as a creator is now Abba, Father, somebody who calls us beloved, someone who is crazy about us in love. You know, with that foundation, I think in our own individual lives, we can overcome sadness, We can overcome anxiety about the future. And so I invite each one of us this week, and if we can, for the rest of our lives, to hear the words of Peter spoken to us in confusion. Beloved. And as we rest in being beloved, let's have the confidence 
that following Jesus and having God's love completely is enough to transform us. You know, here in North America, um, Western Pennsylvania specifically, it's a time when everything is green. The image of pastures being tilled and stuff being planted is something that we see as we drive around. Um, even our yards are lush and verdant with green grass. One of my favorite aspects of springtime is the dogwood tree. You know, to me, it's a great symbol, symbol of transformation. The legend of the dogwood says that it was the tree that provided the wood for Jesus' cross. It was a tree that grew strong and tall and was powerful. But after, the legend goes, that its wood was used for the crucifixion, it no longer grew strong and tall. Rather, it was then just this short tree that kind of hung out at the edge of the woods, but that was blessed with a powerful flower, a flower that shows the cross, the blood stains, and the crown of glory. I hope each one of us will get out this week and find a dogwood. You know, mostly they're white, but some of your neighbors will have pink ones. Get a good look at that tree and anticipate the transformation. You and I are in a time of confusion and anxiety, but as followers of Jesus, beloved of God, we have every right to, to see and to plan for a vibrant new future. The future is in our hands. And even today, I am so moved by the medical professionals who are standing up tirelessly to help us get through this. They are the heroes today, and I hope that each one of us in our own calling sees ourselves somehow as having a role in the transformation. Maybe we should plant more dogwood trees. Maybe all of us should see the month of May, you know, as a time to be in this new life. It's going to be different, but I also think it's going to be better because we are the beloved and we follow a shepherd who is leading us home. He wants us to have abundant life that begins right now in this Eucharist as he stays with us and come to, comes to us again. Together now, let us renew our faith in Jesus as we recite our creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. 
He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Amen. Trusting that we have the shepherd with us who cares for us and leads us, we ask for his guidance as we offer to him our needs. For the church, that we may be a living witness to the need for repentance individually and collectively, always returning to the good shepherd who calls us by each name, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations at war and for all people affected by violence, that leaders may find a way to bring justice and peace to their lands, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who respond to the voice of the Good Shepherd, calling them to help shepherd the flock for ordained and lay vocations among God's people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have suffered physical, mental, or emotional trauma, that they may find relief and comfort through the assistance of others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have wandered far from the fold, that they may hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and be open to responding in hope and wonder, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we offer to God the prayers of our hearts, let's pause and remember those in our community who are most in need, those who are ill, those who have lost their jobs or are struggling or who are struggling to maintain their businesses, that God's grace will touch them with healing and confidence <clears throat> and a way to see and to achieve a better future. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and compassion, we thank you for the voice of the Good Shepherd that we hear in your good news to us. Father, help us to follow Jesus courageously. We know that now we are vulnerable, but in our weakness, we are strong through your grace. Please hear and answer all of our prayers for we make them in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord and shepherd forever. Amen. My friends, pray now that our offering may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and benefit of his holy church. Amen. Amen. Lord, restore us by these Easter mysteries. May the continuing work of our Redeemer bring us eternal joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, may the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we dwell always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. He has made us children of the light, rising to new and everlasting life. He has opened the gates of heaven to receive his faithful people. His death is our ransom from death. His resurrection is our rising to life. While the joy of the resurrection renews us and the whole world, we sing with the choirs of heaven an everlasting hymn to your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your word, inseparable from you, to him you have made all things, and in him you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he dwelt and was made flesh. He was revealed as your son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering all those who believed in you when he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant, and to manifest his resurrection. He took bread. He gave you thanks and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup and said, this is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, may glory and honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever and ever.
Now, together we join our hearts and our voices to pray together as Jesus, our Savior, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all unnecessary anxiety and fear as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are many are one body for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, once you said to your apostles, today you say to each one of us, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look on our sins, but on the faith of your church gathered together today and grant to each one of us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the risen Lord Jesus be with you all. And also with you. Now, here with this small group of people and wherever you're watching this from, offer each other now a sign of Christ's peace and love. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. You know, for us, this Holy Communion is so important. And we all long to be back in this place where we can actually receive Holy Communion together. But Jesus is not limited by space or time, and he comes to each one of us. So wherever we are today as we celebrate this Eucharist, Jesus is with us. And once again, us to know we are beloved. So we prepare our hearts to encounter Jesus in this sacrament. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. My friends, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away our sins and the sins of the world. Our Good Shepherd, who comes to us and leads us to everlasting life. 
Happy are those now who take this opportunity to receive him into their hearts. Lord, may we possess with a pure heart that which we have taken as food, and may the gift we have received today bring us healing, strength, and courage, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Father, eternal shepherd, watch over the flock redeemed by the blood of Christ. Lead us to, lead us to the promised land. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so, my friends, again, I extend the invitation. We are a small parish, but we remain connected to each other. And even though we're practicing the best we can social distancing and we are flattening the curve, we are here for each other. If you have a need, a friend, a family member has any needs, please call. Um, we will try to you know, unite our forces and bring you the help that you need. You know, if you need you know, groceries, anything at all, please don't hesitate to ask. And for all of you who are studying for finals this week, know that this little community is praying for you. We celebrate your accomplishment, and we trust that as you go through this milestone, you will be people who follow Jesus and bring new life and creativity to our world. So congratulations to you all. Good luck this week. My friends, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God.